God bless you. This is Pastor Ren of Mandy speaking on Awakening Television for the Global Network. I'm so, so excited to start this basic principle teachings for uh, uh, Christians. I, I want to talk about your identity as a Christian. So let's turn our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 19, Acts chapter, Act chapter 11, verse 19. The Bible says, Now they were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phineas and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, speak unto the Grecians preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came, had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I want to focus on the phrase, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Let us pray. Father, we are glad to be gathered at your feet, to receive of the benevolence of your word, to be equipped by your grace, imparted by your spirit we receive everything that you have ordained for us we pray that you open our eyes to behold wondrous things in your word we pray that we'll be enlightened uh, so that we will know the hope of our calling we need you more than ever before thank you lord jesus for what you do in jesus name now for me to be able to rightly uh interpret this text this phrase that i want to focus i just want to you to look at the background, the context of the text. We find now, from 19, we notice that were, the disciples in Jerusalem were under intense persecution that caused them to scatter. They migrated from Jerusalem to different parts of the nations. And as they began to move out, they were preaching the word of God. It's so interesting that in the midst of such intense persecution, the disciples were still preaching the word. In this intensive uh, struggle to survive, did not excuse them from their great commission that the Lord Jesus Christ has given unto them. Now remember, they were being scattered. They were being scattered, and yet still, no, no situation could stop their motivation to obey the Lord. Nowadays, we have everything intact, and yes, we don't want to evangelize. We don't want to preach the gospel. You can't pay your bills a little bit, then you use that as a legitimate excuse not to, to share the gospel, not to, to do the work of God. We, we give a lot of excuses, even at the slight sight of discomfort. The Bible says they were scattered, and yes, when they were moving out, migrating, moving from place, their, from the place of their habitation, from the place of their comfort, the Bible says they were still preaching the gospel. Is there anything that has been scattered, you have lost, that you have used that as an, a legitimate excuse for you to deny yourself, stop the flow, do, decide not to even be consistent in your service to the church? That's because you lost, you lost your job. You don't want to do what God has called you. That's because you are, you are in discomfort. You have lost yourself for that summon of God for your life. Now, I know that is not the message, but you know, I love the word. I sometimes I just want to extract some revelation from the narrative so that it will grant us grace in, in any opportune time. I just want to share the word. Look at that. It's so interesting. They were preaching the word even as they were scattered. Their lives were not intact. Yesterday, they were preaching the word. 
I'm hoping that in this season, God will raise a generation who will not be ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That no matter the circumstance and the situation, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I don't care what is scattered, what you have lost. It, it has not changed the passion or the mandate of God for your life. It has not changed your, what God has said. So yeah, you might have been scattered. You have lost some things, but yes, the God is still God. He's still seated on the throne and he governs in the affairs of men. These people were scattered, but they were preaching the word. And the Bible says, as they began to preach, some of them were preaching to the Jews, but those who were from Cyprus and Cyrene, they came to Antioch, and they found people who were related to their uh, origin, their ethnicity. So they began to preach to the, the Grecians. They preached the Lord Jesus. They didn't talk about their scattering. They were not offended about it. They, they were not pointing finger about how God did not protect them and sustain them in Jerusalem. They have lost their livelihood, but they preach the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says, and the hand of the Lord was with them. That's the presence of God was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. When they preached the word, a great number believed and they turned unto the Lord. As they preached the word, some people received Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, and they were turned unto the Lord. Nowadays, we have a lot of people who have believed, but they have not turned unto the Lord. We have people who are churchgoers warming our pews, but they have not turned unto the Lord. See, it is one thing to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, but it's another thing for you to be converted to be like him. It is not enough for you to just be born again. It, you are born again is an entrance into the kingdom, but you have to live the lifestyle of the son. You have to turn unto the Lord. They have converted unto the Lord. And when this was going on, revival has broken out. Things are happening. The, the evidence of the presence of God was upon them. They sent to Jerusalem to, to ask for help. So Barnabas came over there to help and he began to teach them and uh, equip them. And he noticed that he needed help also. So he went and then brought Paul to Antioch and they both began to teach them for a whole year. They assembled the church together and then taught them the word of God. They equipped the church. They fed them the word of God. They taught much people. And the Bible says, as a result of such teaching and the transformation from believing to turning to conviction, something happened to the congregation. Something happened to them. Their, their lifestyle was so transformed to the extent that the people in Antioch began to call them the name of the master they've been talking about. The Bible says they call them Christians, Christ ones, Christians. So they coined an identity, a name, a label to be able to encompass the characteristics that uh, exemplify the master they were preaching about. Now, it is not a name or a title they place on themselves. It was the people of Antioch who literally look at these believers who have been transformed. And then he called, they called them Christians first in Antioch. So therefore, these people in Antioch were first called Christians. The name Christianity, Christian, was first coined in, not in the Jerusalem church, but in the church of Antioch. Now let's look at the text very well. In Acts chapter 19, verse 26, the Bible says, And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Now, looking at the text, we notice that the Bible says, and the disciples. So what Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas did in the church of Antioch by their teaching, would literally transform the people who were in the church to become disciples of Jesus Christ. And such people were the people who were called Christians in the church of Antioch. Now, people, listen to me. The Bible never said church goers are Christians. You can be in church for years and you're not a Christian. 
Actually, you can be born again, and yesterday you are not a Christian. That is so interesting, right? Do you know that you can have every title in the local ministry and you're not a Christian? So we have people we call apostles. We have people we, we call decades. We have people who are exemplary in servitude in the church. We have people who are very notorious in the church. Yes, they are not Christian. Because according to this definition, the Bible declares, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So therefore, if you are not a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are not a Christian. I don't care whether you've been saved for years. A Christian is one that has been born again, received Jesus as their love, Lord and Savior, and now they have been convicted. You got to transform by the teachings of the Lord, the word, and it is affected their character. Now, if you say you follow Jesus, then we need to look at the way you carry yourself. The way you speak, your attitude, your nature, your lifestyle, the way you do things will literally show whether you have become a Christian. Because a true Christian exemplifies the character of Jesus Christ. He makes manifest the fruit of the Spirit. He walks in love, humility, gentleness. He walks in patience, long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit is made manifest in their life. Now we have people who are very good singers but their character stinks. We are preachers who have no patience. We are people who have been in the church, very good in administration, and yes, uh, they are not ethical. They are, not, they are very pious, but they are not righteous. People of God, followers of Jesus Christ are true Christians. My question today is this. Are you a church goer or are you a Christian? Uh, have you been in church for years that you are churched? Yes, sir, you are not a Christian. Do you, do you have the church lingo? You can preach it, talk about it, quote the scripture, know all the church songs. And yes, sir, you don't even know Jesus Christ. Is it that you, you are so, uh, you have been given so much title that you've been blinded to the fact that the Lord is not looking for people who are heaping on titles, but he's looking for those who are simple enough to follow him in the simplicity of the gospel, in the truthfulness of character, in the genuineness of the faith, in the integrity of his word. Those who have made up their mind that they are going to follow Jesus, he is their master, the Lord, he is everything to them in him we live, we move, and have a be. I don't want to preach, but I need you to get this, please. You can be in church, and yet still, you are not a disciple. Having to notice that many of the churches right now, everybody comes to church and go back home. We are not being taught. They preach to you. And you by the time you get home, you're even forgotten about the preaching. Do you know that there are many people in our churches who are not under discipleship? Nobody cares. You pay your tithes, you go home, and that is it. But today I've come to tell you, it is our duty. The Lord said, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. That discipleship does not initiate until the person is born again. So evangelism must not stop when the person get born again and we leave the person alone. No, we need to continue by teaching the person the teachings of the Lord so that they will become disciples of the Lord.
for you to just be part of a church if the church is not investing in discipleship to equip you, to teach you, not to just preach over your head. But teaching means that you assimilate the truth and there is an accountability for them to check your growth level that we need to make sure that the people sitting in our pews are not wasting their talent and giftings, but they need to be edified, fair to edification, equipped to their divine commission, released so that they can touch their secular domain for the kingdom of God. How many of us are wasting our life just because you are so excited about the hoopla in the church, you are excited about the career you are excited about the titles and you are excited about everything but you yourself, you are not following Jesus. The disciples were called Christians first in nature. You have no right to call yourself a Christian if you are not a disciple yet. You have no right to literally call yourself a Christ one if we don't see Christ in your life. That if you yourself are calling yourself Christian and somebody who is secular, somebody who doesn't know you, cannot look at your life and by the evidences of your character, come to the conclusion that you are a Christian, that you are a fake. How many hypocrites try to defend their faith, nay, uh, their, their faith by their what? Hypocrite, I mean, they, they, they defend their, their, their Christian life by the name and title, but when you examine them closely, there is nothing to show for it. It's about time we allow our life to give us a label that we are trying to impose on, on people, titles they should call us. If your life in the vicinity of your secular domain does not prove that you are a Christian, then you are a hypocrite. I've come to tell you, it's about time we wake up and know that if we follow Jesus, we don't need to tell everybody around us or give them flyers to tell them about the church you go to. Your character will speak louder than even anything you try to give to them. Listen, it was the people in Antioch who called the believers who have converted, transformed by the teachings of Paul and Barnabas. And they look at them and said, these people, their character looks like the master they've been talking about. So because of them, with that, we'll call them little Christ. Christians. Are you a Christian or a churchgoer? Now, I want you to look at this. It says, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. I made some declarations, and I just want to emphasize that before I close this section. Now listen, you can be a churchgoer. And you are not a Christian. You can be a born again person in the church. And you are not a Christian. How do I prove that? Let's go to the book of John chapter 8. The book of John chapter 8 will be able to give us the proof I'm talking about. Verse 31. John chapter 8. The Bible says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall, shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. But I want to focus on the verse 31. It says, he said to the Jews who, which believed on him. They have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They were Jews. But now they believed. They received him. And because they received him, he gave them an instruction continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So his expectation that is this, that when you believe, you don't remain as a believer. Many of you, you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, but you are still stagnant. You are still a believer for five years, ten years, two years, one year. No, it says continue, continue in my word. There must be a systematic discipline in this way to affect your life, to transform you from being what kind of ethnicity and life that you were in, to be transformed, to be a disciple. 
You don't just become a disciple by you just going to church and coming back home. You become a disciple by the self-discipline in the word of God. Continual means continual. It's a systematic uh, system, a discipline. You need to uh, be resilient in your commitment to the word. You, you have to be disciplined in obedience. You, you, you have to make a, have, have a regiment of consistency in his word. If you continue in my word, then... There is a clause over there, then. So it's not everybody who has believed that is a disciple. Indeed. We have fake people who call themselves disciples. We have people in the church who might be disciples of a denomination or a church, but they are not disciples of Jesus Christ. Then are ye, my disciples indeed. God is not calling us to go and raise disciples after us. But it's calling us to raise disciples after Jesus Christ. Their, their motivation, their mobilization into the kingdom must be gathering unto Jesus. He says, then are ye, my disciples indeed. That we have noticed from the book of Acts chapter 11 that for you to be a what? A Christian, you need to be what? A disciple. If you believe, then you have to move on. By you sustaining yourself, being in the word of God, allowing the word of God to affect you, obeying its demands on your life, it will transform you to become a follower of Jesus, disciples indeed. If you are following other, any other thing, by being a disciple of Jesus Christ by his word, then you are not a disciple indeed. Having to notice that many of us, we are very pious, but we don't obey the, the, the authentic message of the gospel. How many of you have been so conversant with the demands of your local ministry, but you don't obey the demands of the word? You, you have become so super spiritual, but you don't want to obey the simple commands of the word of God, like forgiveness, letting go of bitterness, making sure you don't gossip about the past. I mean, they are busy. Christian principles that every Christian must be living thereby. He says, if you continue in my word, then I ye my disciples indeed. Today I've come with the word to wake you up and to stir you up, to mobilize you and to equip you. Remember this, the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. They didn't put the label on themselves, but the people observed them and they gave them a label, a name. Christ was, letter Christ. Today I'm encouraging you, if you've been born again, make sure your life speaks louder than anything you try to communicate to everybody. Remember, he needs Christians, he needs disciples, not just churchgoers or those who are just believed. God bless you. Until next time, this is Pastor Manjiri speaking on our working television for the Global Nature. God bless you, bye-bye.